Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met today remotely with the newly appointed Ambassador of Italy to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Paula Amadi. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the importance of further bolstering relations between Bahrain and Italy, which continue to be supported by official visits and cooperation across all sectors to the benefit of both countries and their people. In this regard, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince recalled his recent official visit to Italy, which marked the opening of the Bahraini Embassy to the country and saw the signing of a number of agreements as well as advancing mutual beneficial investments and trading opportunities. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince welcomed the newly appointed ambassador to the kingdom wishing her success in her diplomatic endeavors. For her part, Amadi expressed her gratitude and appreciation for the continued support from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince towards further developing Italian Bahraini bilateral ties and wished the Kingdom of Bahrain further development and prosperity. The Finna Khair Campaign's Coordination Committee held its third meeting remotely under the chairmanship of the Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid Al Amin. His Majesty the King's Representative for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Board of Trustees Chairman of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has approved a package of humanitarian projects aimed at supporting needy citizens and those who have been affected by the coronavirus pandemic pandemic with an estimated budget of 17.43 million Bahraini dinars. The projects are within the Finna Khair campaign launched by His Highness Sheikh Nasser to support the national efforts to fight the pandemic. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser extended sincere thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for his constant care for the citizens and residents in the midst of the current situation resulting from the spread of the novel coronavirus, as well as his sound directives to confront the pandemic as a united team. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the tremendous efforts exerted by the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to contain the pandemic and curb its spread through applying all world precautionary measures adopted to fight the pandemic. He stressed that history will bear witness to the solidarity and cooperation of the citizens and residents to combat the virus, noting that they have all proved their dedication in serving His Majesty the King and the Homeland, as well as their readiness to continue rallying behind His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in order to contain the pandemic. His Highness also valued the efforts of the members of the Coordination Committee of the National Campaign Fin Nakhir, which is concerned with the distribution of aid and providing various forms of support and attention to everyone who needs it, which comes in implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King. Dr. Sayed said that the meeting followed up on the progress of the implementation of the initiatives endorsed by His Highness Sheikh Nasser within the Fin Nakhir campaign, which include goals and mechanisms of work as well as daily reports on the achievements percentage. National Guard Commander Lieutenant General His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa received BDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant uh, General Diab bin Sagr Al Naimi, National Guard Staff Director Major General Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Saud Al Khalifa was also present. They discussed issues of common concern reviewing many aspects to develop military cooperation. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa praised the cooperation between the National Guard and the BDF, stressing the BDF's role in protecting Bahrain and maintaining its security and stability. In the presence of the Minister of Labor and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamidan, and the CEO of the Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance, Dr. Ahmed Abdel Ghani Al Sheikh, a memorandum of understanding was signed today between the two parties to remotely train job seekers. This agreement aims to launch the initiative of the Bahrain Institute of Banking and Finance to provide a number of training programs for job seekers in the fields of accounting, finance, business administration, insurance, computer, and project management, as well as leadership programs within a modern electronic platform which includes many motivating and encouraging elements. This will include some exemptions from for job seekers to join these programs in the current exceptional circumstances in order to develop personal skills and capabilities and increase opportunities for employing citizens within the programs implemented by the Ministry of Labor and Social Development. 
The Bobco renovation project, which was launched in February 2018, has achieved a new milestone in the field of safety after completing 20 million hours of safe labor without the occurrence of any injuries among workers. The chairman of the board at Bobco, Dawood Nasif, expressed pride in the achievement as he praised the high level of performance by every member of staff who has been involved in the project. The Bobco modernization project is, is the largest investment project in the history of Babco and the history of Kingdom of Bahrain. It will take Babco to a different level of, of operation and will put Babco as one of the most advanced refineries in the world. It is a, a, a project which have just uh, completed two milestones. The first one, 20 million man hours without a lost time accident. And secondly, we just passed the 50% 50, 50 mark in execution of the project. Uh, the technology being employed in this project is some of the most advanced in the world. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 5,146 with 11,487 recoveries and 468 registered new cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to adhere to the rules and affirm the importance of following instructions such as washing one's hands with soap on a regular basis along with avoiding shaking hands and close contact. Moreover, covering the nose and the mouth when sneezing and avoiding public spaces when possible. In our regional news, according to a new lawsuit filed in New York seeking compensation for the victims' families, Qatar secretly funded Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad groups with millions of dollars who carried out terror attacks that killed U.S. citizens. The new lawsuit was filed in a New York court today, a copy of which was obtained and first reported by the Washington Free Beacon. The lawsuit was filed by U.S. Attorney Steve Pearls, who has prosecuted notable cases involving terrorism and terror financing on behalf of families and victims seeking compensation of past terror attacks. Global aid groups like Doctors Without Borders and Saudi Arabia's King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Fest Center are pushing forward with efforts to help Yemen combat the coronavirus pandemic despite challenges posted by the Houthi militia. Efforts from the KS Relief included efforts to support the Yemeni government with medical assistance with 3.5 million U.S. dollars in March, including medications and supplies to help the country face the coronavirus pandemic. The United Nations World Food Program earlier last Last week on June 2nd sent a ship along with assistance from the Arab coalition from Saudi Arabia's port of Jeddah to Yemen's Hudayda port carrying much needed medical equipment and food assistance to Yemen. Meanwhile, in the USA, according to a tally by Johns Hopkins University, the number of confirmed coronavirus infections in the United States topped 2 million today. The pandemic has claimed the lives of more than 112,900 people in the United States, which leads the world in the number of confirmed infections with 2,464,000, according to the Baltimore-based school's latest counts. An expert who had advised the government suggested that, that imposing the lockdown a week earlier in March could have halved the death toll. Meanwhile, British couples kept apart by lockdown restrictions could be reunited and some grandparents will be able to hug their ch grandchildren under plans set out by Boris Johnson. The Prime Minister's plan for support bubbles will allow adults living alone or single parents to mix with one other household. They would then be allowed to interact as though they were one household, spending time together indoors, not having to follow the two-meter rule, and would be allowed to stay overnight. Britain has the world's second highest number of confirmed COVID-19 deaths at more than 41,000. The European Union announced plans to ease a ban on non-essential travel to the continent with foreign students. Non-EU nationals who normally live in Europe and certain, or, or certain highly skilled workers likely to be exempt from the coronavirus restrictions from July 1st. After the virus began spreading throughout Europe in March, the EU gradually extended a ban on all non-essential travels into the 27 member countries plus Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway and Switzerland under, until June 15th. 
With borders inside Europe's ID check free travel area likely to be fully functional again by the end of June, the EU's executive arm, the European Commission, is, commend or is recommending that outside borders be open to give a much-needed boost to virus-ravaged economies. Here's Yasmin Ibrahim with the latest business news. Thank you, Sarah. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain Oil Share Index has closed at 1,280.38 points, marking a decrease of 2.17 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector, investment sector and services sector. 48 equity transactions took place with a volume of 1,828,727 or 222,688 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 39.29% of the total value of securities traded. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development said in its latest analysis of global economic data that the COVID-19 crisis has triggered the worst global recession in nearly a century. I become unemployed. And now that is in the scenario where no second wave of infections happens. In the event that it would, you know, this kind of double hit the fall in global GDP would be over 7.5%. And we'd be looking at perhaps 40 million more unemployed. Uh, critical sectors for our economies and societies have been hard hit. Tourism, air travel, SMEs, to name but a few. In addition, global trade volumes, which were already stagnating, you know, before the crisis, we didn't have a wonderful time. We were in a slowdown. We were already, in some cases, negative growth in some countries, etc. And then the COVID hit. So uh, trade was already stagnating uh, before uh, the outbreak. The Federal Reserve made it clear that it will keep supplying all the help it can by buying bonds to maintain reduced borrowing rates and forecasting no rate hike through 2022. In March, we quickly lowered our policy interest rate to near zero, where we expect to keep it until we are confident that the economy has weathered recent events and is on track to achieve our maximum employment and price stability goals. We have also been taking broad and forceful actions to support the flow of credit in the economy. Since March, we have been purchasing sizable quantities of Treasury and agency mortgage-backed securities in order to support the smooth functioning of these markets, which are vital to the flow of credit in the economy. Our ongoing purchases have helped to restore orderly market conditions and have fostered more accommodative financial conditions. As market functioning has improved since the strains experienced in March, we have gradually reduced the pace of these purchases. To sustain smooth market functioning and thereby foster the effective transmission of monetary policy to broader financial conditions, we will increase our holdings of Treasury and agency mortgage-backed securities over coming months, at least at the current pace. Romanian ambulance staff protested throughout the country over unpaid bonuses for services during the COVID-19 pandemic. The protests followed a promise made by the Romanian president to provide financial incentive of 510 euros to emergency staff treating COVID-19 patients. According to trade union leaders, rules on who can apply for the financial support are unclear. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. And that is it from the business desk. It's back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Yasmin. 
Plastic firms are working overtime to meet record demand for sneeze guards at companies like this one in Dublin, California. The urge of businesses and people to get back to work safely has created an unprecedented demand. Plastics fabrication say they're getting orders for, for the transparent plastic barriers from stores, restaurants, offices and other workplaces. Airport Home Appliances, a retail chain in the San Francisco Bay Area, has ordered protective barriers for its warehouses, offices and stores. TAP Plastic can't keep up with the demand for plastic barriers, which began with hospitals. In addition to not having enough skilled workers, the global shortage of raw material needed to make the plastic barriers is leading to a backlog of orders.